Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we're going to see a more challenging example of how to use the Maclaurin series in the binomial expansion format to come up with an infinite series expression of this particular function. At first you take a look at it and you say, well, there's not a lot of relationship between this and this. But yes, there is if you write it in the right format. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this function. So we can take 1 over the square root of 4 minus x, and we can factor out a 4. When we do that, of course, the square root of 4 is 2, so this can be written as 1 over 2 times the square root of, since this is factored out, we get a 1 minus, and of course, when we factor out a 4 here, we end up with x over 4. Now it's beginning to look a little bit more like this, not quite. So what we can do now is write as follows. This cannot be written as 1 over 2, or well, we'll just write it as 1 half here. 1 half times the quantity 1 minus x over 4 raised to the minus 1 half power. We're almost there. Now take a look here. We have 1 plus x to the k. Here we have 1 minus x over 4 to the mi minus 1 half. Well, if we say that our x has not been transformed into a minus x over 4, and our k in this binomial expansion format is equal to minus 1 half, if we plug in a minus x over 4 for every x in the, oh, wait a minute, this is not quite right, is it? This should be an x squared, and this should be an x cubed. I just saw that. All right, so anyway, if we replace every x here by a minus x over 4 and every k by minus 1 half, we can come up with an infinite series expansion of this particular function. All right, let's go ahead and try that. So f of x cannot be written as the expansion, so we end up at a 1, but we still have the 1 half in front right here. So we have a 1 half times the expansion, and so here we have a 1 in the front, then we have plus k, now k is a minus 1 half. So we write minus 1 half divided by 1 factorial, and this becomes, instead of x, we're going to write minus x over 4, minus x over 4. Plus, the third term, notice we have a k, which is minus 1 half, times k minus 1, which is minus 3 halves, divided by, now becomes 2 factorial, and here this becomes x squared, but instead of x squared, we write minus x over 4 quantity squared. Now let's go for the third term, and you begin to see the pattern here. All right, so here we have minus 1 half, minus 3 halves, and then k minus 2 becomes minus 5 halves, all divided by 3 factorial times the quantity minus x over 4 to the third power, and on like that. Oh, we need a closing bracket. Okay, can we simplify that? Well, we should be able to. First of all, let's take a look at the signs. Notice that we have a minus times a minus, this becomes plus. We have a minus times a minus, that's plus, and a minus squared, that's plus as well. Here we have three negative signs that will be a minus, but here we have minus cubed, that's a minus, and a minus times a minus is plus. So it looks like every term will be a positive term. So we can get rid of all the negative signs, in a matter of fact. Now next, we see that we have a 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, and so forth in the denominator, that, rem that remains. In the numerator, we're going to get a 1, a 1 times 3, a 1 times 3 times 5. And then here we have in the denominator, because this is really in the denominator, we have a 2 times 4, which is an 8. Here we have a 2 times 2 times 4 squared. Now 4 squared is 16 times 4 is 64. Now 64, that's 8 squared. Here we have 4 cubed, that's 64. And we have 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 8 times 64, let's see here, 64 times 8, uh, 6 times 8 is 48, plus a 32, that's 512. It turns out that 512 is 8 cubed. And so we're beginning to see a pattern that in the denominator, we have an 8. Uh, right here, we have an 8, 
an 8 squared and an 8 cubed in the denominator. So essentially, what we can now do is write it as follows. We have f of x is equal to 1 half times 1 plus, in the numerator we're going to have a 1 divided by 1 factorial times 8 times x. Plus, here we have a 1 times 3 divided by 2 factorial 8 squared times x squared plus 1 times 3 times 5 divided by 3 factorial 8 cubed times x cubed. And of course, you can now see the pattern. The next term will become 1 times 3 times 5 times 7 over 4 factorial times x to the 4th power times, oh, 8 to the 4th power times x to the 4th power. And you can see that in general, you can then write the terms as follows. Plus, in the numerator, notice when n is equal to 4, we have 1, 3, 5, 7. So that can be written as 1 times 3 times 5 times 7 times. And the last term will be an n, well, twice n minus 1. So we get 2n minus 1 as the final number in the numerator that we're multiplying with, divided by, in the denominator, we'll end up with an n factorial with an 8 to the nth power and x to the nth power. And that will be the final term or the nth term of the expansion, depending upon how many terms you want to go. And then you take the whole sum, multiply times 1 half, and that will then be the binomial expansion or the Maclaurin series expansion of the function f of x equals 1 over the square root of 4 minus x. Of course, how far do you need to go in order to get a value that's close to this? Well, notice that the denominator gets to be pretty small pretty quickly. 8 squared, 2 factorial, 8 cubed, 3 factorial, 8 to the fourth, 4 factorial. So you don't have to go too many turns before you get a reasonable value for this particular expansion. Now, notice that x will have a limiting value and you probably won't have the x smaller, equal to or smaller than 1, or probably smaller than 1, so the radius of conversion looks like it's going to be equal to 1 here. And that's how it's done.